Friends, I have a story that will make you believe in God. Anyone know where I got that quote from? Quote? Hmm? Life of Pi. Yeah, Life of Pi. A novel and a movie. I read the novel quite a few years ago. I saw the movie last week. It, read it? Seen it? Who, who knows? Yeah, heaps. Good. Lots of us. Just in case you haven't read or seen it, here's the plot in a nutshell. An Indian teenager named Pai survives 227 days drifting on the Pacific Ocean in a lifeboat with a fully grown Bengal tiger after a shipwreck in which his zookeeping family dies. 227 days. That makes Jesus' little 40 days to journey in the wilderness seem insignificant, doesn't it? 227 days. It's an unbelievable story. But the author of the book, Jan Martel, writes with documentary realism. That's his style. He describes unbelievable events in such a way as to make them seem real. And I'm somewhat embarrassed to tell you this, but I did believe it. When I was reading that novel, he convinced me that it was true. I thought it must be one of those novels based on a true story like Schindler's Ark or The Secret River or The True History of the Kelly Gang. You know, there's heaps of them with real people and real situations that are presented in a sort of fictional, uh, fictional world. That's, that's what I thought until I came to chapter 92, which is 81% of the way through the novel, according to my Kindle. We're, we're a fairly long way in here, right? Chapter 92. There... Jan Martel turned on me. He pulled the rug out from under my feet, deliberately, I think, and perhaps even somewhat gleefully. Chapter 92 begins like this. Pi is speaking. He says, I made an exceptional botanical discovery. He's out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, right? But, he says, there will be many who disbelieve the following episode. Still, I give it to you now because it's part of the story and it happened to me. Pi goes on to describe landing on a carnivorous island of floating seaweed inhabited by meerkats where he sleeps in a tree that has previously ingested a human body. He knows that he finds a tooth in a flower. And as I was reading this, I started going, hang on. Is this story true or not? You know, this is getting far-fetched. I mean, tiger in a lifeboat, fine, but carnivorous island? Doubt started to send out tendrils into my soul. And I went straight for Google, the arbiter of all truth. And sure enough, a bit of Googling, the whole thing is a fantasy. He made it all up. At that moment, I turned against the author of this deception. I trusted you, Jan Martel. I opened my soul to your story and you betrayed me. I felt like a fool for believing. And I was racking my brain. Did I tell anyone that it was a true story? (laughs) But I read on because I was 81% of the way through. You know, I wanted to see how it finished. I was committed I allowed Jan Martel still to lead me. I gave him that much trust. But my relationship with the book was completely altered. I did re-engage, but it wasn't the same. That first rush of amazement at such an extraordinary story gave way to a more nuanced, questioning engagement. And isn't faith like that? Isn't faith like that? Was my experience of reading this story in itself a kind of experience of faith, of belief, a a religious experience of sorts, from passion to doubt to questioning trust? I have a story that will make you believe in God. That's how the book begins. Does he mean a story that will give you an experience of faith? That's what happened for me. 
Well, we have a story like that too, don't we? And today, like the life of Pi did to me, I'm hoping that our story will shake you up a bit, that it will test you, cause you perhaps to doubt and to realign your relationship with the author of life. I think we all need a bit of that from time to time. I hope it happens for you through this story. The author of life, that one who may be trusted to lead you through the wilderness. Yes, we have a story of faith. And no tiger here, but something just as wild and all-devouring and perhaps as unbelievable too. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. 40 days without food. Do you believe it? Tempted, tested, put through a time of trial by the devil. Do you believe that? The devil said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He said, bow down to me and rule the world. He said, fall, see if God will catch you. And Jesus said, no, no thanks. My intimacy is with a different God to yours. A different God. And is not this the great temptation? Our trial, our test of faith. Which God do we believe in? Which God calls us daughter, son? Is it a God who allows us to pursue our own comforts, to feed our own needs and desires, even if it uses up every stone on earth? Is it a God who sanctions our use of power to control, even violence to get our way? Is that the God we believe in? Is it a God with whom it's okay to persecute, marginalise and exclude those people inconveniently different to us and demanding of us to cast them back into the sea without even a lifeboat? Do we believe in a God who protects us lest we stumble on the sharp stones in life's wilderness? Do we believe in the God of this world, this world, in other words, the devil's God in this story? Or do we follow Jesus? The test of faith. Out in his boat with the tiger, pie articulates what faith is for him and I see this as articulating the faith that Jesus demonstrates. Pi says, faith in God is an opening up, a letting go, a deep trust, a free act of love. But, he goes on, sometimes it was so hard to love. Do you know that? Do you know how hard it can be? Has your faith been similarly tested? I read a review of Life of Pi, the movie in the age recently by Susie Freeman Green. She really liked the film, gave it a a great rap. But a couple of things that she said in that review gave me the feeling I often get when public intellectuals and journalists with atheist leanings start talking about God. I would describe the feeling as a kind of frustrated hopelessness with a touch of existential melancholy. (laughs) In her review she says, Here is a film that engages with big ideas 
Yes, indeed. Like the existence of God. The existence of God. Is that all it's about, friends? Goodness me. I have a story that will make you believe in God. Does that really just mean I have a story that will prove to you that God exists? If that were the case, I would have stopped reading right there. Does believing in God really just mean taking a position on the existence or otherwise of some tinkering deity? Susie Freeman goes on. Susie Freeman Green goes on. Pi sees his unlikely survival story as a metaphor for believing in God. Yes, with you there, Susie. As a non-believer, she says, I was stirred by the film's depiction of the sublime in nature, yet read it more as a testament to the power of the rational mind. Now, this may seem to you like an overreaction, but friends, this is the devil's work. (laughs) Metaphorically speaking, just in case you're worried. No offence to you, Susie Freeman Green, love your work, respect your lack of faith. But while our society is content to conduct its discourse about religion in terms of faith versus reason as if they were natural enemies and you've got to choose one or the other, and while we're fluffing on about whether some preschool image of God exists or not, the world is going to hell. And the devil's pretty happy about that, metaphorically speaking. What do you think? Am I coming on a bit strong? I I can have that tendency. A beautiful thing to me about Life of Pi, and to be fair to Susie Freeman Green, this is more in the book than the film, a beautiful thing about it to me is the way it disintegrates this false division between reason and faith. Pi is simultaneously a mystic believer and a rational observer. At the end of the story, he is interviewed by representatives of the Japanese Ministry of Transport who are trying to find out why the ship sank. One of them says, Mr Patel, a tiger is an incredibly dangerous wild animal. How could you survive in a lifeboat with one? It's just too hard to believe. Pi is outraged. Hard to believe? What do you know about hard to believe? If you stumble at mere believability, what are you living for? Isn't love hard to believe? Mr Patel, no, don't bully me with your politeness. Love is hard to believe. Ask any lover. Life is hard to believe. Ask any scientist. God is hard to believe. Ask any believer. What is your problem with hard to believe? We're just being reasonable, Mr Patel. So am I. I applied my reason at every moment. Reason is excellent for getting food, clothing and shelter. Reason is the very best toolkit. Nothing beats reason for keeping tigers away. But be excessively reasonable and you risk throwing out the universe with the bathwater. And is that what is happening in our world? Are we throwing out the universe with the bathwater? Poisoning the earth and sea, slaughtering God's creatures, persecuting our brothers and sisters, and believing in a God who allows it to happen. Have we succumbed to that temptation as people of this earth? Brothers and sisters, come and stand with our brother Jesus in his time of trial. Come into this unbelievable story and stand with him on the brink. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, 
Throw yourself down from here. God will protect you. You'll be safe. Not this time, says Jesus. He won't test God. He already knows what will happen when he falls. When he does come to Jerusalem under his own steam and throws himself into God's hands at the end of the story, at the end of his story, at the end of our story, then, then he shows us what faith is. See him now as we will in 40 days or so. See him teetering on the edge of life, hungry and thirsty, beaten and humiliated. See him claim his power as ruler of the world and hear his cry, his final words in this gospel. Abba, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And now, watch him fall. Do you believe? Do you believe?